Welcome to the Bruce Williams channel. Today, I'm excited. We have a Breitling Premier B01 chronograph in 42 to review today. This is on loan from Saltzman's watches. This watch debuted in the fall of 2018, and I really like the design here. Premier is a long-standing name within Breitling's history. It actually predates the Navitimer. It predates the Chronomat. It predates the Avenger, the Super Ocean. This has its roots in the late 1940s, designed by Willie Breitling himself. And this Premier B01 chronograph takes design inspiration from the mid-century modern movement that, that I think works on a chronograph. Uh, surprisingly, I think uh, this, this layout looks really sharp. It's in kind of stark contrast to some of the very bold, very busy watches that Breitling kind of made a name for itself doing, especially in the 80s, 90s, in the early 20, uh, 20, 2000s. That's what I'm trying to say. So if we look at some art and architecture, advertisements and photographs from the 1950s, we can see some of the design inspiration that the designers at Breitling really took hold of. So I look at the sculpted nature of the case, the use of high polish, the use of the repetition of the linear cuts into the side wall of the case. And I'm looking at appliances of the era. I'm looking at furniture of the era. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at automobiles of the era that carry some of the same features. And so it's really fun to see how Breitling has taken that type of design and executed it in a modern watch that is really evoking the mid-century modern feel. I think they've done a great job here. And I think this watch will appeal to a broader range of people that might have just passed Breitling over as being too blingy, too large, um, you know, the lug-to-lug -lug length being too large, the dials being too busy. If we look at this dial on a macro level, we can see it's very simple, very clean. There's nice light play here with this uh, soft blue sunray. We have sunken sub registers in the bi-compax layout. And I think Tudor was the first brand to take the B01 movement and create a bi-compax layout where we ditch the hour counter. Uh, Breitling has started to do that in recent years. And I think it's a, I think it's a good move. It looks aesthetically sharp here. The dial is balanced. And I know this is subjective, but I don't generally time something that runs into the, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine hours in duration. So I can do without the hour counter. This carries elapsed minutes on the right hand side. On the left hand side is your running seconds. We have needle hands here. We have a very faint concentric circle guilloche texturing that I think is subtle and refreshing. And if we look at the printing, the printing is sharp and clean, dimensional, uh, actually surprisingly dimensional, especially on the raised tachymeter ring around the circumference of the uh, of the of the dial. And I like the pop of red of the tachymeter printing and how that correlates with the red painted tip of the chronograph seconds hand. Below the 12 o'clock marker, you guys can see the classic B logo applied in contrast to the Wings logo. I think the B logo was the proper choice for the Premier, and that is balanced out at the bottom portion of the dial with the date aperture above the 6 o'clock applique. And notice how the date wheel carries the matching color, which is a nice touch. And I look at this and I think it's sharp and it's clean and I think it looks pretty dang good under the macro lens. In fact, this watch has been very easy to photograph whether I'm outside in natural light getting my wrist rolls and whatnot for the reviews or under the macro lens, uh, you know, under LED lighting, this watch looks sharp. It's, uh, it's an easy watch to photograph. And that is a small aspect and it might be a silly aspect of being a watch enthusiast is when we buy a luxury watch that we're really proud proud of. We like to take pictures, post them on Instagram. Maybe you're a YouTuber. Maybe you're a part of uh, Facebook watch groups or whatnot or Discord servers. It's kind of fun to show off a watch and when it's especially photogenic. I don't know. I think that's kind of a fun thing. Well, let's talk about the movement. This is the in-house Breitling B01 chronograph. This is an automatic in-house chronograph. It debuted in 2009. This has column wheel architecture, a vertical clutch, 47 joules, 70 hours of power reserve, which I find to be very respectable. That's nearly three days 
of power reserve. The watch has a beat frequency of 4 hertz or 28,800 beats every hour. The chronograph is comprised of 346 separate components, which is a high count when you compare it to other in-house chronographs. The movement is COSC certified and does carry a five-year warranty. If we're looking at the finish work, I think it's very sharp, very classic and traditional in its finish. And I like the fact that you can see it through a Sapphire exhibition case back. And anytime you're spending, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars on an in-house chronograph, you definitely want to see where the majority of your money is going. So the fact that you can do that here on this Breitling, I think is great. And it's a great move on Breitling's part because they've they've been doing that more and more lately. I think they recognize that it's important to their most enthusiastic consumers. In fact, here's another kind of silly thing that I like to do as a watch enthusiast, and that is watch the minute tick over on the opposite side, you know, watch that gear make the position change. I like to actuate the chronograph while looking at it through the exhibition case back and just seeing how everything meshes together. It's kind of a fun thing to do. So I'm going to be quiet here and give you guys a good sense of the tactile elements of this watch. I'll show you the winding action of the non-screw down crown, and I will show you the actuation of the column wheel chronograph. I like the action. You can definitely tell a difference uh, between cam lever actuation and a column wheel chronograph. I, I mean, the feel is different. You don't see the bump or the jump in the chronograph hand. So I compare this to my Speedmaster, and you can really tell that this is a step up. This is a contemporary designed automatic chrono, and uh, I think it's very satisfying. And, and when you're spending this amount of money, you definitely not only want to see it, but you want excellent action when it comes to the elements that you interact with as a watch enthusiast. Now, just in closing, let's talk about the price. $8,700 full retail on the bracelet. That's a hefty price tag. And I compare it to other chronographs, other in-house chronographs around the same price segment. And I'm looking at the Omega Speedmaster Racing Master Chronometer, which I think is maybe a little bit more stylistic in its architecture, but it will be anti-magnetic. It will have a meta certified movement and it will be just a few hundred dollars more expensive than this Breitling Premier B01. I look at the Yacht Club from IWC and I think that one stylistically looks the closest to the Premier when it comes to the architecture, the layout. But uh, that one, I believe, is 3000 or a little over 3000 more expensive than the full retail on the Breitling. And that's one of the things that I like about Breitling is you can get discounts from authorized dealers. You can get significant discounts in some instances. You know, it just depends on the model, the time of year, the authorized dealer. I also look at the Zenith El Primero, which obviously is, is more late 60s, early 70s inspired when it comes to uh, just how bold it is, the colorways. But on a bracelet, that watch, that in-house uh, chronograph retails at 7,000. So it's a little bit less than uh, the full retail of the Breitling. So as you guys can see, it sits in a tough segment. And like I mentioned in the intro, a watch has really got to be compelling if it's going to break into a very strong segment where uh, you have stiff competition. I think the Breitling has done that. I look at the design, I look at the details, I look at the fine execution, and I think they've done a very compelling job here, especially for the prices that these sell for. Um, and every time I talk to an owner, like I actually had a viewer reach out and say, Bruce, I know you're going to be reviewing this watch. I love mine. Uh, it's It's been fantastic. You can share uh, pictures uh, of mine if you want to. Every time I talk to an owner, always very favorable when it comes to this premiere. It's a little bit different from your standard chronomats and Navit timers, and I think it's a good different. Now let's talk about negative elements real quick as we wrap up the video. What would be the negative elements? You know, anytime you have a fully polished bracelet, which this one is very nice, you know, it has that dramatic taper. It has the horizontal or sorry, the diagonally slashed link cuts, and it's fully articulating. I mean, it's a really beautiful 
bracelet. It has more of a jewelry element to it, I think, than a functional bracelet, just from an aesthetic perspective. But it's kind of a smudge magnet, and it will be a scratch magnet. That is inevitable as you wear and use your sport watch. Now, this watch will have 100 meters of water resistance, but it does not have a screw down crown. I know that is a point of interest for many of you watching, but I think the biggest a uh, perceived negative element here that is not, you know, come down to subjective tastes will be the loom. As you guys can see in low light, there isn't much to see here. It's just found on the hands and it is Super Luminova C1. So, uh, I mean, it would be nice to have better low light luminescence, but again, if we're looking at this watch, it's not a diver. It's not even a pilot piece. Uh, this is more of a dressy mid-century modern stylistic type of design that could pull respectable duty as a dress piece, you know, with the button up shirt, with the sport coat, uh, does this would fit under a cuff being 14 millimeters in height, which is relatively thin for an in-house automatic chronograph with exhibition case back and a box sapphire crystal. Uh, so I think it's versatile. I can forgive the loom, but I just want to mention the loom is not awesome on this watch, but I think everything else pretty much is. And I think it's come across here in the videos. Again, this is a very photogenic watch, a uh, very sharp watch, and it's a refreshing release from Breitling. Again, I think they're moving in a great direction as a brand and I'm excited as a watch fan. So uh, let me know if you guys have any questions on the Breitling Premier B01 Chronograph in 42. Uh, if you're shopping for a Breitling, I will recommend Saltzman's watches. They're the authorized dealer that lent this in for presentation. Richard is fantastic. He will go as low as possible. I've never seen anybody uh, be more aggressive when it comes to his quotes. It just depends on the model. Uh, but, but definitely if you're shopping, reach out to Richard. His contact information is in the description. And if there is a Breitling you would like me to review and present here on the channel, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can get it in for presentation. So thanks again, guys. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.